Well, in the new film, Emily the Criminal, a recent college graduate who is facing financial troubles, has her life turned upside down by a charismatic middleman played by Theo Rossi, who ends up changing her life forever. Take a look. Who here has been a dummy shopper before? Raise your hand, but only if you've done it. You did? Where? In L.A.? No, nah, Milwaukee. Milwaukee. So, for everybody else, listen up. In the next hour, you will make 200 a cash. But you will have to do something illegal. You won't be in danger, you won't endanger another person, but you will be breaking the law. So if you're not cool with that, I get it. And you can go at any time. And Theo joins me now. Welcome, Theo. Good to see you. <laughs> it's good to see you. Uh, we you. were just talking before this started about how, what a great film this is. And there's a lot of films out there right now, and not all of them are great, but this was so well done. Let's start from the beginning. You know, we meet Emily, the character that you play opposite of, and she's not in a great place. No, no. I mean, she's, uh, you know, struggling with student debt. She's a gig worker. She's just trying to get by, and she has to figure out another way when her back's against the wall. And, yeah. and she meets Yusuf, and... Uh, Things get a little crazy. Yeah, things get complicated. So your character, Yusuf, kind of introduces her to this world of underground scams, credit card fraud, but it kind of it gets even more complicated from there and turns into something else. Yeah. So tell us about this journey that the two of you are on. Yeah, I mean, sometimes when you're pressed into complicated situations, it reveals who you are, right? Yeah. And I think that that happens for both of them. We truly reveal who Emily is, and then yeah. we also reveal who Yusuf is. Maybe yeah. he wasn't in the right position of where he was. So it's kind of a bit of a role reversal for them, too, in yeah. a way. And, uh, yeah, I just think it's a journey of what people, when their back's against the wall, what they're capable of doing. Yeah, it's true, because, like, you know, this this premiered at Sundance mm. to, to rave reviews. And yeah. one of the reviewers said that one of the reasons that this is such a good film is because it's plausible yes. that something like this could happen when someone yeah. gets into this financial rut where they feel like they have no no place to turn and nothing else to do, right? Yeah, I mean, I think that a lot of people can relate to this because a lot of people are suffering with the same exact thing, right? This insurmountable debt that they're in and what, what can we do, what can I do? And when something's presented that seems completely off the wall, yeah. but you realize that it might just be happening everywhere, and then all of a sudden, you might just be good at it, yeah. <laughs> and things yeah. start to change. Yeah, oh, and it really is, I mean, it kind of, there's a, the line between good and bad yeah. gets blurred in this movie, I think, because it's like, you know, we see Yusuf and kind of why he's doing things, and then you see, you know, why Emily's doing things. How would, how do you see Yusuf? Like, how would you describe him? Well, I don't think any criminal wants to be a criminal. You, you get into a life of crime at points because sometimes it's just all you know, or in this case, maybe family business or yeah. things that you've just kind of inherited into. Yeah. And I think that if there's another way. That would be preferable, right? right? There's not a lot of consequences. But when there's not, when there's not you kind of do your best at it in yeah. a way. So it, it, the lines are really blurred, and I think that's smart to say, especially with Emily, because she has to get ahead of this current situation right. she's in. And Yusuf kind of leads her into something, and, then, and I think it reveals something where even he's like, Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't want to give too much away, yeah. but it was really well done. Um, so let's talk about something else that you've got going on. You've got an awesome co podcast. Yeah. And it's called uh, Theory. Yeah. Right? Theory, yeah. Um, and it's, you know, you're kind of revisiting some Sons of Anarchy episodes. Yeah. So tell me about the podcast and how this whole thing started and why you love it so much. Yeah. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, <laughs> it, it, and meaning that in the beginning it was Theory. Someone approached me about doing a podcast and I realized that I didn't really have an interest in doing that. So I, I uh, called up one of my closest friends, Kim Coates, and we both had realized that we didn't watch this show that we did for almost eight <laughs> years, Sons of Anarchy. And we were like, hey, let's just talk about that. So we did, and uh, we have, we're watching it, and we just finished, and we have no idea what we're talking about, but people seem to love it, and yeah. uh, oh, we're revisiting. It show was a too. giant show, yeah and, yeah, and us discovering things. It's made me a better actor. It's made me a better person. It, it was enough time removed from that show that I can look at it now in a different lens yeah. and realize what a cultural moment it was. Yeah. And what do you love about the podcast format? Because it's a completely different animal. Yeah, I love it because um, we just get to talk and be us. And he's one of my favorite people in the world. And we have so much in common. And uh, I just respect him so much as a person. And we think it's really funny because we're we're 
realizing things that we didn't even remember from all those years because yeah. it was such a chaotic time. So it gives us in this hour and a half or however long we do it, it gives us time to speak on the format. Yeah. Well, I can't wait to watch, listen to that. Yeah. You should definitely catch the movie too. You can catch Emily the Criminal. It's in theaters this Friday.